The Hardwood Hills just had an early exit from the NCAA tournament, so you know what that means. We're going to talk about some Carolina football. Huddle up. You don't want none. You don't want none. What's going on, Tar Hill Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Hill. And in this huddle, we are going to do a little series where we look at some position groups that I'm interested in going into the Hills 2024 football season. I know it's early, but we're right in the middle of spring practice, and the spring game is right around the corner, so I figure that this will be a good opportunity to talk about some Carolina football. But before we get into that, I need you to do me a solid. Give that like button some stinking love and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. This community of Tar Heels has grown tremendously over the course of the last couple of months, man, and we will not stop until all of Tar Heel Nation knows there's a place where we can huddle up and chop it up about Carolina basketball and football. Now, if you're new here, we just finished our first football and basketball season as a channel, and we had an absolute blast over the last couple of months, man. The ups and downs, the positives and the negatives, we go through it as a family. But now we're going into football season once again, and there are a ton of more questions about this football team than what we've had in the past couple of years. And it all starts with the quarterback position, right? For the sake of time, I'm only going to discuss like the top four, if you will. And that's actually being very liberal as far as you know, guys that are actually competing for the starting job. But um, you know, that's what we're going to focus on is just individuals who are legitimately uh, you know, vying for the QB1 spot. So obviously in 2022, after Sam Howe declared for the NFL draft, when the Hills had that disappointing 2021 campaign, everybody was wondering who would pick up the torch. But I think most of Tar Hill Nation firmly believed that we were in good hands as we had the four-star Jacoby Criswell and the five-star talent of Drake May battling it out in camp. And as we all know, Drake ended up winning the quarterback battle and had a fantastic two years at North Carolina, winning the 2022 ACC Player of the Year and being named the first team All ACC quarterback, along with the second team All ACC quarterback in 2023. Then, after posting 17 wins himself over the course of those two seasons, 63 touchdowns passing, 16 touchdowns rushing, and over 8,000 yards passing, Drake May himself declared for the NFL draft, where he's predicted by many to be a top five pick. But to me, things feel a little bit different this year, right? With the quarterback spot vacant and QB one up for grabs, there is an impending battle brewing for who gets the keys to this Carolina blue car, at least initially. So let's take a look at the most important position on the field, the quarterback position. Now, now Connor Harrell was a three-star prospect out of Alabama, and he was ranked at the time as the nation's 23rd best dual threat quarterback in the class of 2022. Connor Harrell was named the 2022 Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Alabama, and he passed for 6,100 yards, completing 72% of his passes for 81 touchdowns to only six interceptions over his last two seasons. He did go 24-1 and as a starting quarterback in high school, and Connor was named QB1 after May opted out of the Duke's Mayo Bowl and showed flashes until kind of tweaking his ankle early on in the ball game, and that really did limit his mobility, and it kind of set him back a little bit. Plus, the kid did not get almost any protection from the offensive line. The Hills have Tad Hudson, who's a six foot three, 215-pound, four-star quarterback in the class of 2023, and he was rated as the 24th best quarterback in the country. Tad was 21-2 and two as a starter in high school. He's more of a uh, classic pocket passer, uh, if you will, but he's got really good zip on the football, especially when he steps up in the pocket and he gets into his throw. You got Michael Merdinger, who's a six foot two, 210 pound, three star prospect out of the state of Florida, where he was rated as the 34th best quarterback in the country in 2024, according to rivals. 
He threw for 2,850 yards, 26 touchdowns, and both of those are second and third, respectively, at Cardinal Gibbons in that high school's history. And then there's the six foot five, 225 pound grad transfer, Max Johnson, who was a three stars prospect, according to 247 Sports, and he was the 15th rated pro style quarterback in his class. Now, most people know that Max is the son of Super Bowl winning quarterback Brad Johnson. And he is the nephew of former Georgia Bulldogs and Miami Hurricanes head coach Mark Richt. Now, Max does have two years of eligibility remaining, and he's passed for 5,852 yards with 47 touchdowns in his college career, which were both at obviously Texas A&M and LSU. So this kid has been playing SEC football for the past four years. Now, now, interesting fact is that Johnson was beat out for the position at Texas A&M by Connor Weigman, but then he replaced him later in the season after Weigman struggled and got hurt against Auburn. After getting the W against Auburn, he was named QB1 until suffering a cracked rib against the hated South Carolina Gamecocks, and then my dude actually cracked two more ribs a week later against Ole Miss. Now, he was 7 for 11 for 123 yards and two touchdowns in a 27 to 10 win against Auburn. He was 17 for 28 with 210 yards passing, two touchdowns and a pick and a 34 22 win against Arkansas and a very interesting game to gauge what Max Johnson can do is the 26 to 20 loss against Alabama where Max went 14 for 25, 239 yards passing with a touchdown and a pick. He took a step back against Tennessee where he went 16 for 34 for 223 yards, no touchdowns and two interceptions. And then he had a 30 to 17 win over the Gamecocks where he finished 20 for 30 for 249 yards, a touchdown and no picks. And lastly against Ole Miss, he was 31 for 42 with 305 yards passing, one touchdown and one interception. And he also ran for a touchdown. Now, I want to put a disclaimer out there. Coach Mac Brown will almost assuredly not name QB1 until possibly a few weeks before the Hills travel to Minnesota in week one. This is for a plethora of reasons, right? You don't want to announce too early because then QB2, you know, has an opportunity or a chance to hit the, the transfer portal if he legitimately doesn't believe that he's got an opportunity to be in that QB1 position. Um, another thing is that, you know, you want to give these guys all as much burn as possible so that they can push each other to be the best that they possibly can be. And you don't want Minnesota game planning for one specific guy because, you know, let's be completely honest with each other. The two main guys that are really vying for this position right now are Max Johnson and Connor Harrell, and they are very different quarterbacks. So without further ado, my way too early depth chart, okay? And this is pure speculation, no insight whatsoever. I'm just telling you what Russ the Tar Heel thinks about this whole thing right now is QB1, it's going to be Max Johnson, man. QB2 is Connor Harrell, QB3, Tad Hudson, and QB4, Michael Murdinger. Now, let me explain for all the Connor fans out there because I know that this is going to be kind of one of those house-divided Topics at this point of the season, I am simply predicting what I think Carolina is going to do. So you ask yourself, why, Russ? Well, a lot of it has to do with what I believe is going to be a major philosophy change on the offensive end where the Heels play a lot more 12 personnel, which is, you know, one running back, uh, two tight end sets, and maybe even some 13 personnel due to that strong tight end room and an All-American running back in O'Mary and Hampton, who we will talk about in another huddle. This is also going to effectively really help Carolina control the clock a little more effectively, which is going to protect that defense, man, from being on the field as much as we all know that they have been. And it's been a weak link during the Mac Brown 2.0 era. So I do believe that there will be packages for Connor Harrell that take advantage of his athleticism and dual threat abilities. And that includes him zipping the ball around the field because the kid has a really good arm. Okay. But it's going to be extremely difficult 
to replace four years of SEC experience over Connor's one start as a Tar Heel. Now, I think that Connor has the higher ceiling for sure. Okay, but at this stage in both of these quarterbacks' careers, experience wins out, at least temporarily. Now, I'm not saying that this is Max Johnson's, you know, he's QB1 and he's QB1 all season long like a Drake May. No, I'm saying he's handed the keys to the car, and as long as he plays well and does what he's supposed to do, which I think he's going to be more of a managerial quarterback, then I think that he keeps the keys. But... Knowing that Max Johnson, in my personal opinion, is going to be QB1 going into the season, you know, I think it is imperative for Connor Harrell not to be disgruntled or, uh, you know, he needs to be ready. That's the best, the best thing that I can say is he has got to be ready because if Max comes in and stinks it up or, God forbid, he gets injured because we know that he has been very injury prone throughout his career – Every single year, he's getting some kind of injury, kind of because of the way he plays the stinking game. He plays the game tough. UNC is going to need that QB2 to step in seamlessly. So it's a very interesting quarterback battle brewing in Chapel Hill that we'll definitely be keeping an eye on. So you know the drill, Tar Hill Nation. I want you to let me know down in the comment section what you think about the Carolina quarterback situation so we can chop it up, man. It's really early. I get that, right? But who do you got, Johnson or Harrell? Who do you want, and who do you think the coaching staff is going to put in there in week one against the Minnesota Golden Gophers all the way back here in the middle of spring ball? And obviously, we'll be talking about this for the months to come leading up to the season. Also, down in the comment section, let me know what position group that you're most keeping your eye on and want me to do a video about uh, in this little series that we're doing. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And shout out to my huddle hooligans for helping me keep the lights on, baby. I love you, Tar Heel Nation. Y'all know your boy loves to talk about some Carolina football. We'll catch you on the next one, baby.